Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> You're about to watch one of Joey's trip videos, but first we want to give a shout out to our sponsor for the video. We were lucky enough to be sponsored by Skillshare for this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 17,000 classes in things like design, photography. You can learn about business, how to draw, music. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Seems like almost every day I'm either asked about photo or video editing. Instead of trying to explain it to people through text or email, pointing them towards Skillshare is a lot easier. I edit my photos using Lightroom and I learned how to use that properly with Skillshare. Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Once again, you guys are getting hooked up. Skillshare is offering the first thousand people to click the link. Two months of Skillshare for 99 cents. So again, guys, just click this link right here. Check out Skillshare. I'm sure you're really going to like it. There's tons of stuff on there for everyone. Thank you very much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Thanks, you guys, for watching. On to the video. Hey, guys. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Sorry about the wind. I'm outside with my buddy, Scott. We're in a super cool spot. Very, very windy. We're going to go on a canoe camp. We're going to get in the canoe, paddle for about half an hour, set up in this spot, in this uh, patch of woods I've never been to before. So I'm really looking forward to it. We've each got a backpack full of gear. I got some good food to cook, some brews. Should be a great trip. So it's super windy out today, but we're lucky enough to have the wind at our backs, which is a big help. Carp look like a, like a carp. <laughs> Especially just one shoulder, you know? <laughs> just sling it over. You know what? Two shoulders to give you so much more balance. You want to be as unbalanced as possible. Absolutely. That's the key. That is true. <laughs> Truly the one it's all about. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm excited to camp. We found uh, another deer kill, or another coyote kill here, I think. We got some toes, got some toes this time. Oh, this is cool, this is pelvis bone. I always thought it looked like a, a mask, like a, an owl or something. Okay, I can't rip it apart, but look at, see what I mean? Kind of like a mask, and then here's his Toes. Hello! I'm not having a good day. Should probably wash my hands now. Eh? The shelter from the wind. Hey Joe, we're out here. The wind, uh, you can hear it, but you don't feel it like you do when you're on the water. We're gonna go scope the area, see if we can find a good spot for a campsite. There's gonna be lots of options. After all the broke back about the uh, comments, I told you I guess the middle tent this time around. <laughs> my wife was a little worried. So yeah, like Scott was saying, man, it's nice and sheltered in here. Even though the wind is pumping through, it's not even really an issue. So maybe uh, go find a good spot for a shelter. I'm going to sleep under a tarp tonight. Yeah, I'm fine either way, whatever we want to do. Maybe, maybe we should um, find a communal spot for a fire because I'm fine with wherever I sleep. This is a nice de uh, flat spot, eh? Nice and open. Dry. Yeah, actually, that's a... Maybe we should keep this for our sleeping if it's dry. This looks pretty good. This does look pretty good. Hey, you know good. what? Quite frankly, it wouldn't be bad having a fire, maybe overlooking the, the water. Yeah. Right. Yeah, overlooking the water is great. And then, nah, probably no stars we, tonight, but. No. I mean, we even using this as a bench. I, I would be not opposed to that. I did bring a bush chair I could make. Oh, no, but like I said, I got a chair. You got a chair too, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this looks pretty decent. Well, it's 
similar to the other day when I was camping. If you look around here, there's a lot of wet spots, like a whole lot of wet spots. So Scott and I walked around. We're able to find this spot here. It's relatively high up, relatively dry, and pretty close to the water, which is great. It'd be nice to sit out, look at the water. No deadfall above, pretty open. So we're gonna set up our, our shelters here. We're each in a, a tarp and a tent respectively. And I think we'll have our fire just downwind a little bit so that the ashes, the embers, the sparks flying off tonight in the wind aren't gonna burn our, our tents or tarps respectively. I've brought my, my trail 50 liter pack with me on this trip. Same thing as go light basically. Go late is no more, so my trail is what it's called. Great backpack. It was the equivalent to the Go Light Jam, and this is a 50 liter. I got a bivy sack with me today, which kind of might come in handy because considering how wet the ground is, and it's snowing right now, so that's good. Got all the necessities today, you know. All the necessities today. <laughs> I actually do. I've got some good food, some new gear, some some uh, gear that I'll use in this in this video. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Baby wipes. Ba bam. So I got a IPA from Iowa. An Iowa PA. Mind or not? From my buddy Shane Coffee. I've got something else from him in here too. We'll go over that in a minute. So here's my pretty lightweight sleep system. This is a negative seven degrees Celsius sleeping bag. This is a Thermarest Neoair sleeping pad. And this is a Sil Nylon tarp. All that together, I can be pretty comfortable. Not very heavy. Takes up a little bit of space, but not much once you get it into a backpack. This sleeping bag will go completely sideways in my bag. Doesn't take up too much room. This kind of forms to wherever holes are in my bag. Also in here, I have stakes and a ridge line. Got these weird like pale styrofoamy snowballs coming down. Snow. <laughs> a bit of snow coming. <laughs> Just a touch. So glad I got that on camera. Wow, that sun, man, makes a difference when it comes out. It's quite warm. Feels nice. Feels really nice to have that sun out. Get rid of this stuff while I can. Just a touch windy. It'll be a good test for this kind of setup. Make sure my, my bowl doesn't keep falling. Got everything.
everything almost set up. I just have to tie down this loose tarp part. It's one tie out. Then my tarp is pretty much done for my shelter. I just got to set up my bed and everything in it. So the options are either go down straight like this or come out. Coming out, I got a little bit more room and the wind isn't coming from this way. It's coming more this way. So it's not a big deal to just pull it out like this. I might even tie it to Scott's tent. Not too bad at all. I just looped it through the tab in Scott's uh, tie out. I'll take you on inside and show you. Okay. Okay, we're in. Probably sleep on a little bit of a diagonal just to give myself as much room as possible. Got this little stick in the middle, I have to avoid that, but other than that, everything's good. Uh, yeah, I'll probably set up my, my gear. I did bring my bivy like I showed you, so yeah, I don't even need this tent really, or sorry, this tarp really. The bivy is pretty good, but uh, it's nice to get out of the wind in here, so. Yep. I'm getting hungry too. Oh, a little snackaroo going. So I don't usually use a bivy. I'm sure you guys have seen me use one once or twice before, normally in the winter time. I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with bivvies as well. But for those of you who aren't, it's kind of cool because I don't really need a ground sheet. And in here there's all sorts of like um, raspberry pickers and just all sorts of shoots coming up, like new shoots for trees and stuff. So instead of going around trying to clear all that out or putting a ground sheet down, a bivy is a good alternative, especially because I can have everything fit inside of it. My sleeping pad and my sleeping bag, a pillow, all that fun stuff. It zips up and it's got like a pretty durable bottom on it. So it's got a screen around the head, uh, like a mesh for bugs. And I've slept in it in the summertime before. I used it like that, bug protection. Right inside, it's gonna go right inside there we go it's perfectly get my negative seven degrees celsius sleeping bag in there this is such an old sleeping bag i have videos of me using this six years ago um so it's lost a lot of down it's all patched up from getting sparkles in it sleeping next to the fire but she still works good somewhat lightweight and small so that's why I decided to bring it it is going to get down whoa big old bird it's gonna get down to negative three tonight and with the wind chill would you say negative seven or eight yeah about that so it's gonna be pushing it but that's okay I don't know how bad the wind chill will be tonight either it usually dies down at night so I'm not too concerned I have uh, some extra socks and long johns and stuff I can change so that is all set and realistically in the winter time just sleep in this really you don't need a tarp or anything like that um, it's not gonna rain if it snows on you it's not the biggest deal in the world but it is nice to have some kind of shelter some place to get out of the elements some place to huck your bivy sack into okay pretty happy with the way everything's set up it's looking like home nice and comfortable Scott's all squared away too so I think I am going to go make myself a chair I didn't bring a normal chair. I brought the Hidden Woodsman Bush chair. I'm just trying to pack a little bit, uh, trying to get everything into my, my one backpack. So brought this and I'm gonna go get three logs or three trees, dead ones, and then a leg one. You guys have seen me do this lots of times, so I probably don't really need to explain it to you. If this doesn't really work for the chair, we can use this for firewood. Um, it is covered in old poison ivy, it seems. Even though this tree is dead, I'm not gonna touch it with my hand. I'll go get my gloves before I really deal with it too much. Yeah, I'll go get my gloves. Should probably be wearing them anyways, but we're handsy cold. Take two. You know they're on my belt, right? That's where I keep them. I know that. I knew that all along. The snow is really coming down now. It's those little styrofoam balls so you can really hear it hitting the leaves. There's 
no shortage of firewood, that's for sure. Yeah, this is perfect. Nice and dead, standing. Pretty tall, not too uh, thick around, so it doesn't make it too too much work to saw. This is a given. It'd be silly not to take this one. I'm just gonna saw it a little bit, even though it's, even though it's on the opposite way. It's leaning this way, and I don't want to saw it normally. Wow, the same way it's leaning because it'll pinch. But I can't really get down here without losing about a foot of tree. So I'm just going to saw a little bit and then push it over. actually a limb that's fallen off the bigger tree but there's some definite nice straight pieces on here I can use for my chair Size of the shag bark hickory. Look at the hickory bark peeling off. Those are some decent slabs, guys. I've not seen one that big before. Like, look at that. That's one big old slab ready to come off. This stuff's good for smoking your meat, like if you're barbecuing or whatever, smoking. You need to soak them in water and then throw them right on the coals and it smokes really good. Huh, very neat. All right, I've collected quite a bit of wood. I think I'm gonna, there's a downed ash in front of me with a lot of limbs just kind of laying off of it. I think I'm gonna take my ax and make some quick work of these limbs, bring them over, build my chair and sit down for a little bit. We didn't get out here until noon and it is three o'clock. Hear that? The styrofoam balls hitting, hitting the leaves. This is a nice spot. Stuff like this. Very dense. Whoa! It's snowing, Scott! It's snowing! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So this, uh, this stuff is very dense. Nice and seasoned, like I said. I love burning ash. Alrighty. She's uh she's coming down guys. It's a little little styrofoam snowy. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. Blizzardy in April. Well that worked. This is my old Sandvik that Mike fixed up for me and my axe mask from Ron at Copperhead Outdoors. Shout out Ron, it's been years. This fall raven saw pocket or axe pocket is just big enough that I can fit the butt of my axe through. Which really helps when it's time to carry the firewood back. Because I know I'm going to get a million questions about what kind of pants these are. These are Fall Raven pants. Fall Raven. I have the Kebs and I also have the Vita Pro trousers. These are the Vita Pros. Two 
you can see in here, I do have some room. I don't really actually have to go on a diagonal to stay all underneath the tarp. When we were paddling in, we were literally hitting carp under the water with our paddles. They were so stacked up on top of each other. I might go toss a line and see if I can catch one or two. Just for fun, I'm not eating carp, <laughs> that's for sure. We've already measured how long my holes need to go. My last trip I was measuring them seven steps because that's how much I used to use, but this is a different uh, chair, a different material now. So I don't need seven steps anymore. So I'm going with six, because last time I had to end up cutting a bunch off the top. The reason I'm making this is because we're going to spend a decent amount of time tonight around the fire. I brought three beers, Scott brought three beers. Um, we're not going to start cooking until later. Most of our time hanging out is going to be sitting around the fire. So I do want a chair. Got my Phantom X sit pad. I'm gonna use it to kneel on. Pretty wet underneath. This is a knife that I haven't used yet. This is a Legum, Legume, Legum, Legum bushcraft knife from, I believe, LT Knife Works. I got sent it with my Boreal shirt um, <clears throat> from Leicester River. So thank you, thank you for that. It's crazy, the, the sun will come out for five minutes and then this will all stop and then like, just repeats itself. We were talking, to each other about like it's crazy how like it's it's cool to experience this some like even though it's nothing really it's just a little bit of snow and then it stops and then the sun comes out and then it's snow again but imagine the amount of people in the world and probably not you guys but overall in general the people who won't be able to ever experience not even be able to but won't ever experience anything like this right just being out in the in the wild out in nature while well, how weather changes. Just as simple as that. It's, uh, it's a luxury that that a lot of people aren't going to to get to know, to get to experience. You just gotta go outside. Just gotta go outside. Being laid up for those three or so weeks there. My health issues really gave me an appreciation, re rekindled my appreciation, ignited my love for being able to be outside and be healthy and just to be out, just to go outside, man. First time I went out, we went to the park with the kids, went my, my daughter and her uh, cousin, Scout, my wife, and I was super happy just to even do that. Doing wraps and fraps, going on the inside, I'm wrapping the logs this way and then this way against the cordage. So we're going to have the fire that way because the tents are back that way. Set it up right around here. Scott's chair. You'll understand why I keep calling them uh, styrofoam balls. We get your dough like we the delivery. Wow. Scott's playing with his nice camera. He's got a Sony. States, 
I'm not sure where in the States he lives. I don't think in New England though. So I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got this drawstring already tied on the top. I'm going to leave that there always. I'm probably going to try to just hoop this around on the top so I don't have to tie it like so. It's a bit straight up, so I'm going to tilt it back some. But I think I'm going to tie these, this cross piece on first. And what's good, because it's so windy, there's a lot of convection, con something whipping the warmth away from my behind. I'm going to put that Phantom X sit pad underneath there. Have I told you guys before? I really don't know. Have I told you before how much I enjoy sunflower seeds? How much I enjoy <clears throat> eating like a handful of sunflower seeds, cracking them in my mouth, spitting out the shell, and eating the seeds. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a, it's a it's a pastime for me. All right, so I'm gonna cut two lengths, about two feet, two and a half feet, to tie up my. Um, leg pole, my leg pole on the chair. I want to wrap this back up into a hank. So it stays nice and neat. Normally I organize my paracord. I'll, I'll cut them, pre-cut pre them into lengths that I need. I'll make, I need to go later to burn the ends of this, but I make a ridge line, like maybe a 25 foot piece, a bunch of four foot pieces, and then some like odds and ends, some small pieces like this, bow drill size, maybe a bit bigger than this. And I'll normally daisy chain them and keep them together. I learned it from Iowa Woodsman, surprise, surprise. But I just got this not too long ago. I needed some paracord, but I threw it in my bag, the Joe way. <laughs> okay, I need a lighter. I'm gonna burn these ends up. I don't wanna waste this cord. And whenever I don't end up burning the paracord ends, goes to waste. Pro tip when you're doing this, might as well do two sides at the same time. Just don't hold them too close or else they will melt together. Also, wind puts flames out. Let's go in the shelter. Okie doke. Pro tip <laughs> when you're melting these. Man, it's still wind is coming in here. Don't let this drip on you. It's not a fun time. Just once around and an overhand knot is sufficient. Buddy, nothing wrong with this. I set it up good this time. Okay. Good, very good. Put a little fire in front. Scott will be next. Cool. I'm sitting here getting a little chilled. So Scott whipped out the jet boil. It's a great idea. We're gonna make up some tea real quick. Don't have our fire going yet or anything, so it's nice to uh, have that option for sure. So again, I have very awesome subscribers and fans and friends from the internet. So I got uh, got hooked up with a couple things I brought on this trip. The first being these stuff sacks. I got a few different stuff sacks from a company called Foxlight. I'll link that in the description. Thank you very much, guys. It's a husband and wife. I believe it's the wife's company. Can't remember you guys' name right off the top of my head. I'm very sorry about that. Quality, quality stuff here. I got probably five or six different stuff sacks, all zipper pouches like I like. Center zip pouches, still, some are still nylon, some are rip stop, some are rubberized inside. They're really cool. This one was, I think, my favorite. It was like a, probably because of the shape of it. You see? It's like a oddball kind of shape. Nice. I like it a lot. I have my very minimalistic, this is um, 
what, multicam, I think, steel nylon. I have a very minimalistic safety kit slash first aid kit in here. I do have things like floss sticks and a space blanket other than, oh, and T, other than my first aid kit. That's why I'm calling it safety kit slash first aid kit. The inside is blaze orange, which I always like. I ended up tying a little handle on it, a little lanyard on the on the, uh, the tab, but they also have a little, a little lanyard on there. This one is my possibles pouch for this trip, this orange one. It's got things like my compass, my headlamp, uh, a lighter, fat rope stick, lens cleaner, and then last but not least, I have another multi-cam one with food and my coffee spit. We're gonna go in detail about this coffee spit here in a second. You, you end up having about one quarter full canisters everywhere, so at some point I need to start actually emptying them out. Mm. So I figured this was a good trip to empty this one at a time. Right now. Definitely. Because normally this thing like roars, roars to a boil pretty quick. Like a jet. As if it were. <laughs> like a jet. With my coffee spit came this Stomach Ease tea from my buddy Shane. I appreciate it. I'm going to try some now. Don't want no stomach problems while I'm out here, so he swears by this stuff. While I'm waiting for my tea to steep, I'll show you guys the coffee spit. It has nothing to do with a cup of coffee. So <laughs> the guy's name is Shane Coffee, and that's why it's dubbed the coffee spit. So this is pretty cool. This is for cooking chicken, whatever you want to cook over the fire. Like a, on a spit, you know, like a spit. So there's this piece with a loop, this piece with a little U. And to the best of my knowledge, we're placing them distance apart. We're going to slide the one skewer through, through the hole, and then sit. The end of the other end of the skewer is squared off. So it's gonna sit in this U. And then near the fire or over the fire, you have these two skewers that your food can be stabbed upon. I'm gonna use sausages today. I've got some Italian sausages, but I've seen him use chicken breasts and um, other things, I think fish, but pretty cool. Looking forward to using it. Thanks, Shane. Coffee. <laughs> well, the tea isn't helping out that much. We're still a little chilly, yes. It's been nice to sit here and drink our tea and warm up a bit, but I think we're both pretty chilled. Yeah, no, it's getting a little cold. So uh, plan is we're gonna get a fire going. Um, Scott's gonna start the fire. I'm gonna go collect some more firewood and that way we'll both be putting ourselves to use, warming each other. Nope, can't do that, can't say that. So I think that we're gonna split up duties and Scott's gonna stay here and get the fire going. I'm gonna head out back into the woods and collect some more firewood because we don't have enough uh, to hold us over all night, especially if we start it now. Sound like a plan? That sounds like a good plan because it's only early. I think it's only what four, five o'clock. There we go. Four thirty-two. Yeah. So it's only four thirty. Um, now it doesn't get dark till about seven, right? That's true. Yeah. So, which is great. We're gonna have. There's plenty of wood, so we'll have a nice fire going. And uh, but we want to want it to get through the night, right? So I think we're gonna cook on it and mm -hmm. uh, have a couple beers. Yeah. I brought some beers. I don't know if Joe did. I know I brought a few. <laughs> we'll see. So this season is almost coming to an end. This type of um, camping video, you're not going to see for too much longer. Maybe a few more. And then it's going to be into uh, canoe tripping and backpacking and actually a wilderness living. I'm gonna do a big wilderness living trip. Extended, long, long trip by myself. I'm gonna have lots more info on that coming up soon. I'm gonna do a couple of videos leading up to it. Gear videos and explaining just what I'm doing, but it will be epic, mark my words, for real. Check out this old gnarly tree. Looks like a little animal den down in here. Hello! Animals! Are you in here? Nobody answered.
a welcome sight. It is. Our plan worked. <laughs> I got firewood. Scott made a fire. It's funny how things like that work. So now, I think that that's all squared away. I think I'm going to look for some worms. I'm going to lift up some logs, search around for some wormies, and try to get a, a hook in the water. Well, lots of um, signs of mouse. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can tell with the acorns, they've got like only small little holes chewed in them, as opposed to where the squirrels rip them open. Oh, wormy! Bam, son! Right off the hop. Earthworm gem up in this piece. All right, so I got my rod rigged up. A little wormy balled up on a worm harness that Scott was nice enough to let me use. So you got a, just a um, sinker. Oh, it's a poop show. All right, got my sinker here, about a foot and a half above my worm. Little little flash on there too. So we'll see what we can do. It's really only going to be carp or catfish, and uh, I'm not going to be eating either of those. But this is just kind of for fun. The water was considerably shallow on the way in, like a foot to six, six inches to a foot deep on the sides where we were paddling. So I'm going to have to try to huck it into the middle as much as I can, as far as I can. It's a little slippery, I'm not going to lie. We'll see. Let's we'll see how she goes. Okay, you're good. Maybe just gonna hold it. So it's recording? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right, it was only in there for how long? 10 minutes? Not yeah. Yet. Got a nice bullhead. I believe it's a brown bullhead. Maybe yellow. If yellow bullheads are a thing. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Want to watch the barbs, right? I'm gonna have to grab some pliers to get this thing out of here. He just bit me pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know it's a I know it's a bullhead. It's not a channel cat for sure. I just am not 100% on if there are yellow bullheads or if it's just a variation of a, of a brown. Yeah, you can bite those all you want. They're not gonna hurt that. Not like my fingy. Not like my fingy. Dude, <laughs> hear that? Yeah, no kidding. Oh. There we go. There? All right, beautiful fish, really. That is a nice color. Well done, Joe. Thank you. The storms under the warm harness that I can ride. Sure enough, 10 minutes later, Joe's real one in. So it's a funny, uh, funny little creek here. But it's, it's amazing how the water has dropped. When we literally It's almost 6 o'clock. We're just talking about supper. The sausages that I brought are not pre cooked. So they'll take a little bit to cook. It's about time to start cooking some food. Pretty hungry, both of us. So uh, I'm gonna get this fire ready for cooking. As you can see, we've got a decent amount of coals. Still some fire up, or some wood on there to burn up, but uh, we do need to make it thinner and a bit more narrow so we can fit the, the, the grill across. We can even kind of have our fire over here, I guess. That's what we'll do. We'll keep our fire going over here and have our coals in here and be able to rake in or out as we need. Ah, it's a little smoky though, once you start messing with it. Woo! Okay, girl can go across there. Pretty decent. So 
we are gonna cook some on the grill and some on the spit. Scott and I are both eating these for dinner, so not gonna all fit on the grill kind of thing. And it'll be cool to see how that spit works. The old Joe Robinette grill. These are sweet Italian, sweet Italian sausages, not spicy. Sticking away from the spicy for right now. Three on here, we'll try to do two on the coffee spit. That's not for coffee. Okie doke. So we're gonna go the U on the, well, let's put it sideways to it. That makes a lot more sense. We'll put it right next to it. Using the old noggin, Joe. All right, so get the dirt off this. That'll be helpful. You want extra dirt on your sausages? Yes, please. All right, so we'll leave it on the one. <laughs> For this, I will, actually, because it's got the two on it, I don't think it, there's a need to weave it in. That's helpful having those two, those two prongs. Very helpful. Almost like he knew what he was doing when he made it, eh? How crazy is that? Okay, see how that goes. I ripped apart the casing a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. So that goes into there, and then that sits on there. Well, bam That works, eh? I think I'm gonna have to put it a little bit closer. Touch closer. Oh, she's hot, bud. She's hot. Cool. Oh, Ember just flew in my hand. For the trip, this is the, this is where I bought the food. Oh wow, those are cooking quick, bam son. These are almost done, these guys are getting there at least. But they've been on. Yeah, direct heat too compared to that, so. Well, we're waiting for the sausages to cook. Scott's making up his side dish, which is some rice. And I thought for this trip, I'd go old school. I'm gonna can of beans. <laughs> When's the last time you saw somebody eating beans while camping? So, I don't have a can opener, a, a, a standard can opener, but I do have my Swiss Army Farmer. And on this, there's a very useful tools actually. This is probably one of the more useful Swiss Army knives. Knife, awl, saw, can opener, bottle opener. We're gonna use, you guessed it, the can opener. All right, so just to show you guys how to do this if you're not familiar with it, it's a useful thing to know. You see how I'm doing that? So the inside, this rounded quarter round, needs to go on the inside and this bottom part needs to go on the outside, kind of a 45, on a little bit of an angle at least. And just push down. And then you're gonna work your way, cutting with this round, oh sorry, this rounded top part in and down, pushing forward each time. It's not that hard, it takes a minute or so, but Instead of bringing a can opener to the woods where that's only going to have one purpose and it's kind of bulky, maybe a bit cumbersome and Benedict Cumberbunch. Or you could bring this where it's got multiple uses, stops working halfway around the can. No, I'm just joking. Multiple uses and uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to use anyway. So I'm not going to go continuous. I'm not going to continue to go around because they're just beans and I can pour them out like that. It's a life hack. Don't do a full job when you don't have to. It's a hack. The beans. This is my Zebra Billy can. This is my 12 centimeter one. I've had this probably longer than most pieces of gear I have. This and my small Wetterlings axe. Okay, 
sausages will go good with that. I might even put them right in there. Cause I don't have any mustard. I don't have any mustard. You say you want to leave when you say you want the mustard. Yeah. Nope, not at all. That's like, that's like the equivalent to, why don't you just come here for 11 instead of 10? Yup. Nope. Pop them in? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Or are we yeah. going one there? Doesn't matter, throw them in, that's good. Even better. Perfect. You guys gotta check out my spork I got. I got sent this spork from um, a subscriber and uh, a couple, a, a subscriber and his wife or a subscriber and her husband, however you wanna look at it. <laughs> a couple though, very cool. They're from the UK, cannot remember their names off the top of my head, I'm sorry. I put an Instagram post thanking them already a few days ago, but check this out. Spork with Scout's logo on it, Scout's face on the spoon. Isn't that super cool? I was so stoked on that. When I when I felt it through the package, I knew it was a spark and I was excited. Awesome, awesome. I can use it out in the woods or whatever. But when I pulled it out and I saw that on there, I was just beside myself. Very, very, very cool. Thank you so much. Anyways, buddy. You oh, you got your beverage. beer? I better Too go early. grab a beverage. Yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're gonna Sorry, Joe, and make it drink. <laughs> Bad influence that I am. Go with this one. Oh, this is a uh, this is one from Quebec as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is my jam, double fruit punch IPA. I've not tried it. I don't know why I said it's my jam, but it sounds like it is. This is from my French Canadian friends. Vopopoli. A lot of pulp. A lot of pulp. Is that what that means? Do you know French? No. All right. Perfect. Two Canadians I am French, but I don't know it. Two Canadians who cannot speak a word of French. <laughs> Bonus! I did it, you know what? I opened my beer again. I without, we will wait for it. I did that in our last video. Can't take I this guy anywhere. Somewhere. Cheers, buddy. Oh, oh, you want to? <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Oh, that's good. Wow. Wow, that is super good. Oh, and you have? Granville Winter Ale. This is one of my all-time favorites for the winter. For the winter. For the winter. I know it sounds obviously kind of dumb to say. Mm. Like around the pool in the summertime, I wouldn't enjoy this, but the cold weather and stuff. It's what would you go for around the pool in the summertime? <sighs> oh, I like IPAs. Yeah. yeah. Like a, like, like I even home. like Coronas in the summertime. Yeah, I can handle that. But uh, I do like that. All right. Let's see. Are these cold beans. Cold beans. Lukewarm beans. I'm gonna put these right in there. Check on these sausages. Well, I'm happy with this coffee spit, man. It took maybe five minutes longer than the than the grill, and the grill was right on top of the coals. So, pretty good. Pretty good. Supper was good. Uh, we we're just talking about our setups, our tents, and our chairs, right? And how there's pros and cons to each. We both got here at the same time. Scott was finished setting his tent up in, I wanna say 10 minutes, not even five minutes. I probably messed around with my tarp for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, and then the chairs is the same thing. Scott was able to just unfold his and good to get ready to go. I had to go cut my poles, tie it up, excuse me, tie these, adjust it, get everything ready. The benefit of Scott's is obvious. It's you roll up and you're good to go. The benefit of mine is a little more hidden. It's lighter and it's smaller, right? That's not to say his tent and his chair are heavy by any means. They're all ultralight, like backpacking style stuff. But what size backpack did you bring? 75. 75 liter backpack, and I had a 50 liter backpack. I physically can't carry as much as uh, a lot of people because of my my small stature. 
So I'm really used to putting things in a 50 liter backpack, 55 liter backpack, and in order to do that, I can't be putting a tent or a chair in it. My alternative is obvious, it's the tarp and the bush chair. Small, lightweight, easy enough to set up, but takes some doing, takes some, some tweaking and stuff. And for a trip like this, I'm fine with that. But when it comes to like a backpacking trip especially, there's no way that that's gonna happen. I'm gonna be carrying my Big Agnes Fly Creek UL1. And if I do carry a chair, it's gonna be definitely this kind here. That's for more of a canoe trip for me is the chair, but the backpacking, uh, definitely the tent. So two different, two different methods and we both have both, you know what I mean? We both do both things. It's just what you feel like doing when you feel like doing it. Scott has a pretty big canoe trip coming up in early May. Yeah. With his son mm -hmm. and how many people? Four of us. Four of them total. So he's kind of testing out his gear, getting things ready for, for that trip. I'm trying to learn how to use my camera. <laughs> yeah, he's got a really nice camera, Sony, so that he's, he's testing it out too, right? Just just kind of understanding how it works, tweaking it and everything out here. Well, he can go home and edit it and find out what worked and what didn't work instead of going on that, what, like week-long Algonquin trip and screwing up footage and coming home and being being bummed out about it. Oh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. full. Well, let's go check this out. I was, uh... Oh, my eyes are all burning from the smoke. I found this earlier when I was walking around trying to look for firewood. It's a bird skeleton. Don't know what kind of bird, but there's some feathers here. Maybe turkey? Pretty decent sized bone here. Nice. Seldom does that work that well. Normally you have to pound on it a couple times and it flies out, but that worked pretty, pretty well. Bam. This is ash, another straight grained wood. I really like to burn ash. It's good wood for burning. We're losing light as you can see, to just trying to get all of our wood organized and ready for tonight so we don't have to be doing what I'm doing now in the dark. What you just saw me split that log with was my 19 inch Sandvik X. What is, is this the wild, do you know, remember if this is the wildlife model? The wildlife hatchet? Uh, I don't remember the, key. the specific one? The it's right. not the smallest one, it's the one above it. Right, so the wild, I believe this is the wildlife hatchet because the smallest would be the mini hatchet. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Scott's uh, wildlife hatchet. I believe you can see the, the size difference. I think it's what, 15 inches? It's about right. Ish? Yeah. This is, this is 19, that looks about right. This is about right. Okay. Anyways, the head's quite a bit smaller. Let's try and split this one with this and see the difference. Now, this is a smaller piece of ash than I just split because we're working our way down the tree or down the limb, but that's how she goes. So just like the other one, I think if I turn it around and hit it, it will pop out. Or just do that. <laughs> there we go. Not too bad. Let's see how she goes. I think that might have been on a crack, so let's see. We're fine. Bam. So exactly like the other one, actually even less effort than the other one. Very cool. Smaller piece of wood. Smaller piece of wood, that's it. Yeah. But the uh goes to show you, man, even a small little hatchet or axe can do big work. You know, it's super handy to have. And what's this to carry? Not much. Yeah, that's what I really like about it. Yeah. Before we lose any more light, it'd probably be a good idea to get my headlamp out so I don't have to search for it afterwards. To get it out, there she is. Old Faithful. Put it in the pocket until later. Still got residual light. It's, um, what time you think it is? Do you guess? Uh, 8.15. <laughs> How good was that? 8.15 on the spot. He didn't oh, no. use a calculator. Uh, calculator. No i stop talking now. Let's see. Oh my 
feet are pretty damp from walking around all day in these muck boots. Um, they're great for keeping your feet dry. I was walking in all sorts of, you know, muck, as it were. <laughs> Anyways, I find myself funny. So, so I'm just trying to dry them off. They've getting they've gotten chilled now because I'm not walking around anymore. Them being damp, and then the cold air, um, they're pretty pretty chilly. So. Fire always helps that. I do have an extra pair of socks to change into before I go to bed, and I 100% will be doing that. It's pretty important to have that if you can, especially this time of year. Even the winter, you know, spring, your feet, are, your feet get wet. In the summertime, I guess your feet just get wet in general, but in the summertime, it doesn't really matter as much. I've never really been on an, an actual real camping trip when my feet didn't get wet. The thing about Gore-Tex too, right? So they'll Gore-Tex will keep your feet wet from the outside, or sorry, dry from the outside, but they they don't breathe very well. Just like these things, these things don't breathe at all. This is neoprene and rubber. But uh, <clears throat> that's why a lot of the times I'll opt for hiking shoes on backpacking trips and canoe trips because I know my feet are going to get wet. They're going to get wet if they, if I wear Gore-Tex boots too. Uh, it just takes longer for the Gore-Tex to dry or if it dries at all. It's after 10, we've had enough. We were talking about how much we like to lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> so we talked ourselves into going to bed. <laughs> Good night, buddy. Good night, man. <laughs> the wind has died down completely, which is awesome. Super helpful takes the stress out of sleeping, you know? I'm gonna leave my bivy open tonight so I don't get all um, condensate-y. Condensate is a word, I've used it before. All right, guys, you have a good night. I'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning, guys. So it's 7.30, slept pretty good. All I can hear is birds chirping, so that's kind of nice. Not too cold. Must have snowed some more because I see it all up on my, my tarp here. But I'm going to get up and make some breakfast. I hear Scott rustling over there too, so time to get up. So not only did it snow last night, it's snowing right now. And a little flurry's going on. It is. So Scott's been going through some of his gear um, in his video. So if you guys want to check out his video, you'll have a lot more information about his type of gear, what he's testing really out for his spring Algonquin trip. It's kind of interesting. He um, used quite a bit different gear than I did this trip, different sleeping bag as well, much uh, lower rating. So go on and check his channel out. His channel is called Adrenaline Outdoors. And I'll link it. But yeah, just another version of this trip and another idea on some gear. I'm just walking here, trying to warm my feet up a little bit. My boots were kind of frozen this morning. It says it feels like negative eight right now. I can't really see my breath. Can't be that bad. I'm gonna grab some twigs from this fallen tree here and get a fire going. Hear the woodpecker? I'm not going to be gathering anything thick because I don't really want the fire to last for hours. I want to cook and hang up and warm, get warm before we get out of here. So I'm just gathering um, maybe thumb sized pieces at the, at the wider, at the thickest. Uh 
I got snow on my seat. Look at that, snow on the old seat. I'm going to make some shavings really quick. Just put them right on my sit pad for now. Just to get the fire going. I haven't used this knife much while I've been out here. But what I have used is pretty decent, especially wearing gloves. This big handle really fills your hand. All right, without gloves on, it feels a bit wide for my hand. But I do have girly hands, all girly small hands, so. Yeah, it's nice to have fire starter, man. I don't want to always want to like screw around. All right, so I'm just shaving off some of this fat rope. Super handy for things like this, and I don't want to screw around too much. I only made a few shavings and collected those twigs you saw me collect. So this is actual rope soaked in, in like, well, she came apart because this is the end of it, but soaked in like, um, like a flammable epoxy kind of thing. So then all the fibers just pop open and it's very, very, very flammable. So that's the part pieces I shaved up. You see the catch and they go real quick. I am gonna also use this piece just for demonstrative purposes. I have a bunch of it at home too, so I'm not concerned. See that? And that, that thick rope part will burn for a long time. So even if you have marginal tinder, like obviously don't throw huge pieces like that on if you don't need to. But if you don't have anything but marginal tinder, something like that, I could literally throw these twigs right on. On this side, these twigs are thumb size. On this side, they're thin. I'll throw the thick side down first, just to prove my point. Didn't even use my shavings. Blasphemy. Looking to be like a beauty day. You can't really see it behind me. But Mr. Sun is showing his face. The wind's not bad at all. So uh, yeah, I'm really liking it this morning. It's nice to be able to hang out in the morning. Normally I'm in such a rush to get out, have such a long drive or have to be picked up or whatever. So it's really nice to have some camp life in the morning, just kind of relax. Yeah, mine's done. Okay. Yeah. Scott's, is, uh, Scott's checking out the bush chair. I am. I think you might have sold me on this. So it's obviously lower because I'm shorter, yeah, yeah. but you can make it taller. And then you can rem remember the length of the, the logs you need. Like you right. can measure it with your steps or whatever. Probably seven or eight for you. Yeah. Tie it up maybe a foot higher. Yeah. And it's no, I like it. And like when you when you took it out, it's just this little sheet of fabric, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it fits in no. your cargo pocket. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Pretty handy. Yep, I like it. I'm sure Malcolm will be happy to hear that. So if you if you haven't seen me do this, and if you haven't done this, this is an awesome way to do a dish-free breakfast because you're just boiling water in your <clears throat> in your pot, right? That's it's not dirty at all. But once you start putting this kind of stuff in, it gets a little soupy. That's not an issue either, super easy to clean out, but for quick, easy morning routine, especially on a canoe trip, although I did get sick of it last year after the end of the year, um, but this works, this works in a pinch. And what I have found is adding something like, uh, even Scott, I heard Scott talking to his camera last night about this, a little pepperoni in the morning with this, or some bacon or something, really goes well. It feels like you get what you need um, with the meat and this, because this alone, it's a bit lacking, I think, for 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 a, a, a energy spending day of paddling or hiking or whatever. Would you say that's a fair statement? I think that is 100%. There we go. Validation. My oatmeal's all done. I really like to pour some hot water on my hands in the morning. It feels super good. It's not scalding by any means. It's just residually hot still. 
but it feels very nice because my hands all beat up. Oh, it feels so good. Well, we're just packing up here and I found something else pretty cool. So we both think it's a catfish skull. It's really shaped that way, like a shovel, very flat and broad. Pretty sure that's what it is. That's the size of it compared to my hand. So a decent size, the underneath of it, where his eyes would have been. I don't know, I think that's what it is. Pretty nifty. I've never seen a catfish skull before. It looks like it's been gnawed on by some rodents. It's got these two little pieces that look like they come off. Maybe that's where his whiskers came out of. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So that's three um, pieces of skeleton from three different animals we found just in this one location in these woods. So do you remember what kind of other animals we found yesterday? It was the turkey and a deer. The deer doesn't strike me as odd. Or not even, none of it strikes me as odd, but just uh, haven't seen the other ones before. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for coming with me, Scott. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's it's good getting out with you. It was, it was exciting getting a canoe uh, in early April. That's is very true. The earliest I've gone on an overnight canoe trip, so that part was nice. Yeah. That part was nice. Having like-minded uh, friends close by is a good thing. That is a huge thing, for sure. Well, thanks guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Joe, and uh, we got another one in the books. Thanks for watching. Yeah, all right. I'll do.